All right, here we go. Another episode of Canada on the Rocks. I am your host, Fadi Kudair, local realtor here with Southern Group Ottawa. And today we have Ben Morris from Wesley Clover. Ben, how are you? I'm great. How are you doing? Doing fantastic. What are some of the ways that we could, as a city, or as individuals, I should say, in the city, support Canada North? I wish you sent me a list of, you know, prepped questions. I'm just teasing you, Fatty. Look, you can't support a business if you don't know about it. And I think one of the greatest challenges that we have sort of in the most immediate future for our city and our business community is we got to get better at telling people what we do. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't sell houses if people don't know about you. People can't call you. There's no such thing as a secret agent. That's right. People can't call you if they don't know about you. And so the same argument can be made for tech business. One of the things that I do in my spare time is volunteer as vice chair of the Canada North Business Association. Yep. And so you've spoken to Guy Levesque, my colleague, who's our chairman, you know, and we're at this really exciting inflection point in the life of, you know, the Canada North BIA, and that's hiring our next executive director. And so when that person is announced fingers crossed, in the very near future, the plan is to make a concerted effort to really get a better understanding of what businesses do on a global impact in Canada North and take that message to our community. Because, you know, again, bringing it back to real estate for a second, a referral is worth 10 times more than, you know, a cold call or a cold lead. 100%. Online. And so, you know, if we as citizens of Ottawa knew a little more about the businesses in Ottawa, and that we could advocate for them, whether we're buying something from those businesses or whether we're talking about them. You now know the statistic about Solink. You know, 10 times more, they ingest 10 times more video. On a regular day. Every second, every minute, every hour, every day, every month, every year, then gets sent up to YouTube. And they're using that data to process it with AI and they're generating all sorts of really cool and valuable business insights with that video. Now that you know that statistic, and the folks, you know, listening to us today, you're going to pass that along, right? And so that may help Solink further down the line. So I think if we can do a little bit more of that or a lot more of that, we would be so much better off. Yeah, We're I think so it's humble. education. Education is the biggest, biggest piece is like letting people know about what each and every business in the Canada North or on the West Clover or both bring to the city. That's it. And, you know, one of the things that I've, I've been trying to do with this podcast is, is, you know, feature businesses that are within the city to try to bring as much awareness to the city as possible and also to prove that Ottawa is such a fantastic city. It sure is. So much more that, that the eye can see. There's so much hidden gems that are in Ottawa that sometimes you're like, that exists in Ottawa? That came from Ottawa? Yeah. Like, you know, businesses that just like, all of a sudden, like you, you, you see them as a rising star, but you don't see them when they're struggling yep and you know this for you guys like you see those journeys quite at the early stages we do what are some of the ways that you do from an incubation perspective other than you know funding that you guys can actually help those businesses kind of back to the city we are (laughs) very fortunate to have an incredible network of mentors and people that have had real experiences to share and pass along their knowledge and so the most successful companies are founded by entrepreneurs in their mid. That's a tried and true global mm-hmm. statistic. The most successful, well, statistically speaking, companies that are started by 21 year olds are not as successful as companies that are started by folks in their mid 40s. And so what Ottawa and Canada have to offer to young entrepreneurs is this ecosystem where Per capita, we've had a significant number of successful businesses that people can lean on in terms of leadership and experience. Yeah. And so where I'm going with this is, you know, our when it comes to technology and when it comes to starting businesses and when it comes to accelerating a business, um, we have like the most ripe ingredients possible for success. We bat way above our average for new companies, you know, successful exits, and and a variety of other things that are meaningful. Where we don't do so well, statistically speaking, is around things like venture funding raised, um, you know, perhaps big giant exits. And why that's relevant is because those are often, quote unquote, stolen by the Torontos of the world, Mm -hmm. where, you know, 
they've just got a larger population. And so any big successes you're going to hear about. And so sort of going back to what we do and what we get involved in, one of the things that we saw as a gap in our community was this idea of an accelerator. Yeah. And whilst Invest Ottawa and others in the city provide amazing services for different categories of businesses, we saw about 10 years ago this emerging market called SaaS, software as a service. Yeah. And so today, you no longer go to Staples and buy you know, your DVD or your CD-ROM, put it in your computer and load it. Everybody licenses software online. And so that was really new 10 years ago. And that had a different go-to-market approach, commercialization approach, that had a different product architecture approach, and a different funding approach. Because, you know, if you think about a software licensing business model where you're taking 10 bucks a month instead of, you know, 200 bucks for a one time, it changes the way investors look at a business. And so we, as a result, support this organization called Elspark. They are now on their 10th year and their 10th cohort of SaaS company acceleration. They've put through nearly 150 companies in their program. They've had countless exits. You know, the promise that Elspark offers their businesses that that uh, are selected through a committee uh, is that they'll double their revenues in nine months if they join the program. And they've proven that successfully over and over again. And so that's one example of where Wesley Clover has a bit of an invisible hand and we are helping to fund that organization because we so strongly believe in it. Absolutely. It, it sounds like what every guru out there keeps saying, look, if you really want a shortcut to success you look at the blueprints and follow sure and it sounds like wesley clover in one way or another has those blueprints for any organizations that's starting in either the software as a service or platform as a service or even hardware given you know the background and with mitel and all sure. of that you have that sort of blueprint that you can give out and say you know not only we're going to help you with the funding not only we're going to help you out with this but we're also going to show you the blueprint to success as long as that idea makes sense, as long as that idea checks all the boxes for Wesley Clover. You know what? At the end of the day, you can distill it down. You can distill any market down to a very, very simple formula. It's about customers and it's about product. Yeah. And if you can't get them to work together, you're not going to have a business. Mm -hmm. You know, over the years, and I've been doing this for 25 plus years now, over the years, I, I have noticed there is a very common trend and theme across successful businesses and successful founders and entrepreneurs. You got to have the right product. You got to have the right team yeah. and you got to have the right timing. And if, and if you don't have all of those three working in harmony, you're not going to go anywhere. 100%. And there's no such thing as like, one of the things that I kind of always try to avoid, there's no such thing as luck. It's really just opportunity, meaning preparation. And in this situation, when you've got all three sort of matching up, it's really an opportunity for success. It's an opportunity to make your luck. Sure. And I, that's where I was going to go. There's this sort of fourth invisible you know, component, and that is luck. And you got to get lucky for those three items yeah. to sort of align. However, you can also make your own luck. Exactly. And what I was going to say with, uh, with luck in this situation is really just when you say having the right team, but also having the right mentor. Sure. You know, the folks that have walked your walk before, that have done sort of the same situation where you were in, it's easier for them to say, oh, when I was there, this is the mistake that I made, and maybe you shouldn't make it. Maybe you should go this way instead. You got So, you know, again, back to why this city is so amazing and unique. You have entrepreneurs that have done, you know, had successful exits over and over and again. And so it's unfair to call out a few names because there are so many, but you look at the, you know, you look at the Salon Angels of the world that did Mindbridge and before that it did a bunch of things and now he's on to his next thing. Mm -hmm. You look at the ecosystem that we have, the, you know, the Debbie Weinsteins of the world. She's been involved in everything from Mitel to Canopy Growth to Tweed to, you know, to, to all sorts of things. Yeah. You look at the Rob Ashes of the world. He's on the board of, or was, I haven't checked recently. I believe he still is on the board of Shopify. You know, Rob very successfully, you know, ran Cognos and then exited and, you know, has provided sort of his guidance and mentorship mm -hmm. over the years. You look at, you know, Russ Freen, who was CFO at Shopify early days. 
he he's been around the block a whole bunch of times. The the sort of DNA that exists in Ottawa, in particular in Canada North, where dating back to Bell Northern Research, Nortel, Mitel, Newbridge, there are there are some real gems there. And what I'm most excited about is, you know, you look at you know the Shopify effect that our city, you know, has. There are hundreds of people that have had phenomenal early stage experiences at Shopify yeah. that have been lucky to monetize that success and are now giving back to the community in all sorts of different ways, including funding, you know, startup companies and giving back and mentoring and other things. So, you know, there is this virtuous flywheel in life. You know, you, you learn, you give, you take, you, you give back. And, and again, I, I think that is something that is very special about this city that you don't see everywhere else. You know, mm -hmm. Toronto, it's about the hustle. It's about sort of taking what you can out of the system and then going and living your life. And Ottawa is a very different sort of city in that respect. Yeah. And I find like the incubation period in Ottawa, it does take a little bit longer as far as organizations go. But when it, when success comes, it comes kind of, in a big bang at the end. I, I think, um, so I, I, one of the things I do for work, you know, I get to host a lot of folks from outside of the city. Mm -hmm. So whether it's, you know, technology banking tours, whether it's hosting investors, whether it's bringing a delegation from ABC through the city, time and time again, the feedback is consistent. Wow, I didn't know Ottawa was this amazing. I, I didn't know you had all these companies. Yeah where, why haven't I been here before? We do bat or hit above our weight, but we are also not a flash in the pan. So it's not about quick marketing and a quick hit and a one hit wonder and, and off you go and move on. It really is about building sustainable businesses. And I think, you know, if there was a business tagline for Ottawa, it would really be about building sustainable global businesses. That is what we are best at. We yeah. don't you know, when you look at the types of businesses that we have, we don't do a lot of consumer business, you know, in, uh, in tech. You know, we don't have the, the latest TikTok or Snapchat app born in our city. Those right. come from somewhere else. We do a lot of the plumbing. And plumbing is really important. And so whether it's communication-oriented plumbing, whether it's e-commerce-oriented plumbing, whether it's cybersecurity oriented, we do some amazing things. So here's another fun, fun piece of. I, I just yeah. want to touch on that, just in case for folks that are watching. What you mean by plumbing is like the real sort of hardcore stuff behind the scenes that a lot of businesses have to go through to be able to provide the service that they're providing. A absolutely, plumbing. Uh, so plumbing in the sense of infrastructure. Exactly. So you can't have a big. You can't have a big city without a big highway. Makes sense. And so you know. We are really good at sort of that infrastructure level, not to be confused with hardware and network, but infrastructure. Shopify is the de facto infrastructure for businesses that want to run omnichannel. Mm -hmm. Solink is the de facto business for a next generation security, security. product. Makes sense. That's what we're good at. So what is, like, if, if I have to kind of peel the onion a little bit on Wesley Clover's selection of organization, yep. what does it take to be a selected Wesley Clover organizations at the early inception days? So Wesley Clover, in a nutshell, put money to work in three ways. We have what I would call a traditional venture capital model where, you know, we have a team of people that are looking around the globe for the next thing and we want to put money into that mm -hmm. business. That's, you know, a very traditional VC approach. And we have our sort of sweet spot. And the companies that we look for are business to business oriented, mostly communications related because that's part of our pedigree and obviously SaaS cloud, you know, security focused. Then we have our um, accelerator and incubator, uh, you know, sort of pillar of investing. And so I mentioned Elspark earlier. We also have a group called Alacrity. We have eight Alacrities around the world. These are micro funds that we've started and that we manage. And those target young entrepreneurs with good ideas. And there's an entire funding process for that. And then finally, I would say we have our, call it our philanthropic avenue, you know, where through, um, you know, the Wesley Clover Foundation, 
we may see something that we really like from a philanthropic perspective and we will you know opt to put some money into it so Fantastic. that's kind of us in a nutshell and how we deploy capital if there's one thing that you would you know you'd be like ah oh, i hate i haven't mentioned this on the show what would it be today <laughs> I don't have anything specific to be on the candid. spot on that one. I'm happy to be put on the spot. I think, you know, look, I would go back to Ottawa is what it is today, but what do we want it to be tomorrow? And it, this does not require a lot of, you know, thinking. What kind of community, what kind of community do we want in the future? Mm -hmm. And what can we do bit by bit every day to get us there? So People aren't happy with something with the city. Let the city know. If people want to participate in a business, but they don't have capital to invest, well, volunteer. If people are looking for their dream job at a business, but they, you know, have been told that they're, you know, that they don't have the right credentials to uh, qualify as a candidate, figure out another way into that business. Internship. Absolutely. It's about being persistent. It's about being professional. It's about pushing hard. And it's about, you know, thinking outside the box. And sometimes it does take a little bit of rubbing shoulders with the right people as well, too. So that's where networking events and, you know, going out to places that are doing exactly what you're looking to do um, already happens. Just like we said earlier, follow the, the blueprint. If it's already there, why try to recreate the wheel? That's it. So, you know, sort of to that end, um, you know, in Canada North, we have phenomenal events like Tech, Tech Tuesday, Tuesday at the Marshes or at the Brook Street that you know, regularly attracts three to 400 people. Last night, for example, was sold out. Doors were closed due to fire restrictions. There are different startup initiatives. There's product management meetups. There are networking, different networking events. If people are interested in technology, you know, follow the Canada North Business Association, the Canada North yeah. you know, BA, follow Invest Ottawa, follow, you know, Follow some of the local tech leaders, and they will regularly promote, you know, where they're going, what, where they're spending time, how they can be, you know, reached. Yeah, I mean, it's it's like if you're trying to figure out what the weather looks like, you're just gonna go and follow the weather app in a way. The same way here, it's like if you want to know what's going on in the city, follow the shakers and the makers in the city that do put some dents every every day in sure. the city. Totally agree. Really appreciate it. So much to learn here, and then there's so a lot more that we did not unpack, unfortunately, but we'll get to it at some point. We're going to have a, a separate conversation, you and I. Really appreciate it, Ben, being on the show and uh, what you bring to the city. Again, folks, if you like what you see, please don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe so you can get the alerts and, and find out more about Canada and the city of Ottawa and, and the lovely businesses that we have. And we are on that crusade to make sure that Ottawa is never a boring city. Told you not to use that word again. <laughs> Thanks again, Ben. Really appreciate it. My pleasure. Thanks Perfect. for the invite.